Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 7. The point of this series is to hopefully make it easier for you to do alright in your mini leagues by finishing in the top 5% globally. You'll not win the whole thing, but you'll hopefully do alright. I've got a small number of players that we look at and if you only choose from this small group that I'm showing you, you should do alright. And I've made a further modification this week in the way in the order that I'm showing them and I'll explain that when I get there but I'm hoping it's going to make it even simpler for you and you'll make better choices. Right so now we look at last week's scores and then we'll look at what's happening in game week seven. So starting with the goalkeepers, none of the goalkeepers that are in this system did anything for us this week. <laughs> it was a very strange scoring week for FPL. For the defenders, Gvardiol 9, Robinson 7, Pedro Porro 5. Second page of defenders, Anderson 8. Third page of defenders, Harwood Bellis 7. And the rest nothing. For the midfielders, Palmer got 25, Salah 10, and Buemo 9, Rogers 7. Second page of midfielders, we have Gordon 9, Diego Justice 8, Semenyo 7. And the last page of midfielders did nothing. As for the forwards, Watkins 11, Havertz 6, Solanke 6, Jackson 5. For the second page of forwards, nothing. So basically, if you had Palmer, you probably got a green arrow. If you didn't, you're a lot less likely to have got a green arrow. So we're now going to look at the players in the system for this upcoming game week 7. I'm going to tell you what I think of them, but I've made a very significant change, and that is the order I'm displaying them. They're now going to be displayed in order of importance. So, for example, the goalkeepers, the first keeper I show you, is the most important keeper to have in this system. That doesn't mean you have to take lots of hits and just get the important players. And every week, the important players are going to change slightly. But looking at the next few weeks and overall ownership and what I think is going to happen, the first players you see are the ones that are worth having. So I'll hopefully give some examples as we go along. So for the goalkeepers, Raya... Very good keeper. Next two fixtures, good chance of getting a clean sheet. He then does have possibly three tricky fixtures, but I think that's fine. If you've got him, you can hold him. As long as he doesn't get injured, he's all right. Next most important would be Sanchez. He's all right. I mean, Chelsea leak a lot of goals to get the occasional clean sheet. But there's Reyes good, Edison's good, who's not in the system, and Becker's good. Any other keeper, you'll get some clean sheets. Then Flecken and Henderson. So if you can have Raya, great. If not, Sanchez is your next best choice. For the second page of keepers, we have Ariola, Martinez, Becker, who is a very good player, and Pickford. So Becker is the second best keeper in the system, but he's so low owned, if you don't have him, it's not a problem. Whereas if you don't have Raya or Becker, it's Raya that's going to really hurt you. And then we have Ward, which could be any Formulian keeper because the Formulian keepers don't play. The example I show, I show you on the defenders what I mean about the order. Hopefully it makes sense. Hopefully this will make it simpler going forward and not more complex. So for the defenders, Gabriel is the most important defender. He's a good player, nice fixtures coming up. When you have him, you can just keep him. Trent's the second most important player. He is expensive. He's a bit more difficult to get to. Liverpool's fixtures, after this week, they've got Chelsea, who are scoring for fun, and Arsenal, who are scoring for fun, then Brighton, who can score against anyone. So clean sheets are probably going to elude Trent for the next few weeks, possibly, but he does have a chance of attacking returns. 7.1 is expensive, though. Then it'd be Pedro Porro's good, Gvardio good. Gvardio seems to be getting the minutes. Only 5.9 million now, so he's pretty good. Pedro Porro, you want him for attacking returns. Spurs will get the occasional clean sheet, but Pedro Porro could get something. And then Konza, he's up this high simply because he's currently still quite popular. He's not going to get many points, but on the off chance that he does get points and you don't have him, that's going to hurt you a bit. And then Robinson and Saliba. So Saliba is better than Konza or Robinson, but in the grand scheme of things, you're actually better off having Konza. I know it sounds weird, but at the moment that's true. For the second page of defenders, Lewis. Bit of a gamble, but if he keeps getting the minutes at 4.7 million, he's a brilliant buy. Then Masrawi for Man United, Burn, Anderson, they're kind of 
okay. They get the occasional occasional clean sheet, but nothing special. And then Virgil van Dijk at 6 million, very good player, but as you can see, he's very expensive. And then the third page of defenders, we have Fass, who's bench fodder, Howard Bellis, bench fodder, Greaves, bench fodder, Mikalenko, and finally Ben White. So Ben White is flagged. He may not play this coming weekend. We don't know at the moment. But even if he was fully fit, what my new order is suggesting to you is Ben White is the least important of all the defenders. So if you've got him and you've got nothing else to do, swap Ben White for another defender in the system and your squad will actually be slightly better. So he's 6.4. Two pages back, Pedro Porro is about 5.5. He's better in your squad than White because not having Pedro Porro is going to hurt you more than not having Ben White is going to hurt. I know that might sound a bit backward, but by the end of the season, hopefully this will all make sense. Regarding the midfielders, Palmer's the most important midfielder at the moment. He's a very good player. Salah's, he's got very good returns this season, but he doesn't seem to be quite as good as he could be. He certainly missed a couple of good chances in the game just gone. And at 12.7 million, he's not as popular as Palmer. They may get similar points in the next few game weeks, but Palmer's a slightly better buy. Saka is a good buy at the moment, as is Embremo. Rogers is nice and cheap. He's very popular. He, the last two game weeks he's got returns, he may be at the start of a role now. Luis Diaz is coming to the end probably of his useful role. He's got Palace next, then he's got Chelsea at home. And Chelsea are very good at letting in goals. So he may still be all right, but his minutes are always a bit of a risk. And then we have Smith Rowe, very popular. He'll get returned sometimes, but... He's away to Man City this week, so I'm not expecting anything from him. For the second page of midfielders, Eze's on his way out as far as popularity is concerned. He's always very close to getting lots of points without ever actually getting lots of points. Semenyo's growing in popularity and he's got good attacking potential. He scored at the last week. He's away to Leicester. May get something there, but he's, he's all right. He's only 5.7. Then Diego Jota, like Luis Diaz, Probably on his way out of this system, but we'll see what happens. Gordon and Son. So Son's a very good player. We, I think he's got a yellow flag at the moment, so he may not play. I certainly wouldn't be bringing Son in at the moment. Well, obviously not, because even on this page, the other four are cheaper, and the other four would actually be better midfielders to get. And then for the third page of midfielders, bench fodder Winks. Garnacho, who's not getting enough minutes, but he's a very good player. Bowen, who's a good player. He's going to get you often four five six seven points and the next three games he's got Ipswich at home there should be points there then away to Tottenham then Man United at home Man United have issues at the moment so Bowen is actually quite good but he's so low owned that not having him doesn't actually hurt your rank at all whereas if I go back a couple of pages as an example here we have so Rogers is 5.2 million if Rogers gets five points and Bowen gets five points and you own neither, then Rogers really hurts your rank and Bowen doesn't hurt your rank at all. So back to this page. Then we have Dibbling, another bench fodder player. Fernandez, loads of people dumped in. He wasn't highly owned anyway, but then he got a red card, so a three match ban. So he's just been dumped a lot this week. He's now at 8.2 million and the red card's now been rescinded, which means he is available to play the next game. He is still a very good player. And if you aren't following this system, he would be a good player to have because he could get good points. But all but one of the other midfielders are actually a better choice than him at the moment. And then Nkunku, who I'm saying, if you've still got him, just get rid of him. I'll not be reporting on him again after this game week. So although I think Fernandes is a good player and I think Bowen's a good player, there are other players in the system that are actually better for you to have. Absolutely don't take hits to move them on. But if you've got them and you want to change something else and it's not costing you a hit, it's okay to swap them for anybody that you saw further up in the midfielder pages. Regarding the forwards, Haaland is the best forward to have. He's the most important player in the game at the moment. If you can have Haaland at the moment, you should get him. The second most important, by the way, was Palmer. Watkins is a very good player at the moment. He's getting attacking returns. He could score against anyone he's worth having. Jackson, good player at the moment. Havertz at home to Southampton. He could get a load of points this game week. And of course, you only get three forwards. And I'm showing you four very good forwards here. So you've got a pretty nice choice. 
Then wood, he's nice and cheap, nowhere near as good an option as the others here, though. And then Slanky. Slanky's a better player than Wood, and he's probably going to score more points the next few game weeks than Wood, but he's lower owned. So if you own neither Wood nor Slanky and they get the same score, it's Wood that hurts you the most, not Slanky. So if you had to have one of those two, it depends what sort of manager you are. Slanky's more fun, probably going to get more points, but Wood is the slightly safer pick. The second page of forwards, we have Welbeck, we have Vardy, then we have Jao Pedro, and I was looking at his injury status earlier today. He's probably out for this coming game week. He may well be back the week after. So if you've got him, you want to sell him, that's fine. A reason to keep hold of him is when he's playing, he's on penalties, he is a good player, and he is only 5.5 million. So he's nice and cheap. So if you've got 11 playing players and you've got Jao Pedro, it's fine to keep him. Then Calvert-Lewin, 6 million. Isaacs. So Isaac started off as a banker in this system on game week seven. He's completely risky and sellable. He didn't play last game week, may be available this game week, but he's very low owned at the moment. But he's away to Everton, and if he does play, then obviously he could get a return. Absolutely don't buy Isaac at the moment, I'd say. And if I had him, I think I'd certainly be selling him for somebody higher up the food chain. And then Munez, very much out of favour. And then Cannon... He represents any 4 million forward who doesn't play and is never going to get you points. But the point is, it frees up some budget to use elsewhere. So hopefully that made sense. It certainly made sense in my head when I was trying to put it all together. Basically, all you need to do is try and get as many players as possible from the beginning of each of the lists, from the goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, forwards. Absolutely don't take hits to improve your team, generally speaking. But it's each week it's worth maybe finding one of your players that's low down the list and swapping them for a player higher up the list. If you can get a player that's green higher up the list, that's worth doing. And although there are times you have the option of selling a green player for a white player higher up the list, just be careful when you're doing that. Because you're. it's a safer move to go for a player higher up the list, but you may get fewer points. And over the course of a season, it does actually make sense. Right, we're now going to look at suggested bench order. So for the players I've just shown you, I'm going to show you who I suggest you put on the bench. The first player you see that I show you that you've got, I suggest goes on your bench, which means the other player or players are the ones that play. So for the keepers, if you've got a 4 million keeper, they're on your bench. And I'm not expecting many clean sheets this week from these keepers. Then it's Henderson, Pickford, Martinez, Ariola, Flecken, Sanchez, Becker, away to Palace, and then Rare at home to Southampton. So I'm aware that Becker was on the second page of keepers because a lot of the other ones will do you more harm if you've not got them. He is actually the second best keeper within the system. So if you've got him, you don't have to move him on. Absolutely don't need to sell him. And he's the second best choice for this week. Now for the other players, the first player you see that I show you, I suggest goes position three on your bench, next one position two, and the last one position one. So any cheap four that's not going to play is position three on your bench. Then Howard Bellis, Anderson, Robinson, Greaves, Maswari, Mikolenko, Winks, Faust, Byrne, Dibbling, Munez, Konza, Smithrow, Eze, Wood, Calvert-Lewin, Jao Pedro, Welbeck, Vardy, Garnacho. Now, I know I've got Jao Pedro there, but I'm assuming he's either 90 minutes or no minutes. So if he's no minutes, that's fine. He doesn't even play. If he's 90 minutes, then happy days, he might get something. And then for the other players, the order would be Semenyo, Gordon, Bowen, Virgil van Dijk, Fernandez, Rogers, Pedro Porro, Diego Jota, Lewis, Gvardio, Mbremo, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Trent, Son, Luis Diaz, Isaac, Solanke, Jackson. So with Isaac, again, hopefully he's either 90 minutes or no minutes, or 80 minutes or no minutes. He's probably not going to play, but if he does... He's away to Everton. He's got a decent chance of getting something. Regarding captaincy, we've got a good choice this week. But Haaland, I think, is the safest choice. I think he's going to be the most chosen. It's certainly who I'm going for. But other good choices are Havertz, Salah, Saka, Palmer and Watkins. So if you can, I suggest you make one of these your captain and one your vice captain. But don't choose Havertz and Saka just in case there's the remote chance that the game gets postponed, then you get nothing for your captain's choice. But apart from that, 
any two of these is fine. Or if you want to choose one of the green players or two of the green players from the previous pages, that is also fine. As for the background picture, yeah, that's like the inside of my brain, I guess. I've got all these ideas in my head and I've tried to put them down on paper and try to explain them. But I know sometimes it may seem a bit complex, but hopefully it made a bit of sense. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say, I think, about that. So thank you very much for watching. Once again, sorry if it was a bit confusing. This series was originally aimed at people that want to be playing the Fantasy Football League with friends or family, but really don't have the time to do lots of research. They maybe don't know lots about football and they just want to know, who should I pick? So you just pick the players from the earlier pages that you can, higher up on the page, they're the better players to pick and you should do all right. Thank you very much for watching and let's see how it all pans out at the end of the season. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>